welcome to North Carolina. This is Sunset Beach. And welcome hipsters, flipsters, finger popping daddies, and groovy chicks. This is the Jazz Ranch South. And uh, we're down here on vacation visiting our families. And uh, so glad you joined me this evening. I'm going to be playing a song for you called Green Dolphin Street. And I'm going to be talking about three of my favorite pianists. Ahmed Jamal, Bill Evans, and Horace Silver, and some stylistic features that I'm going to demonstrate in this video. So here we go now with the great song called Green Dolphin Street. Okay, welcome you all to Sunset Beach, North Carolina. And I'm not using any script, so I rarely use scripts, so I try to imagine you're just here as a student sitting next to me. And you know, can you imagine going to a piano teacher and he had a script written out in front of him and he was reading from it? That wouldn't be too cool, right? So. Uh, I will do this in segments just so I don't have to repeat myself if I make a mistake. And some people have asked me, well, don't do that. Make the mistake and we'd love to hear that. Well, no. Uh, continuing. Okay, now this is the famous song called Green Dolphin Street. And I picked this out of random. It's just to make four different points. First one being comping before the beat and comping after the beat and also voicings, fourth voicings and improvisation lines. So we'll start with the comping first. Now comping before the beat just means that if it's one, two, three, four, I'm going to comp before that. In other words, I'm going to comp.
Count on the end before the one. So we'll count one, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four, like that. Okay, so I'm going to show you the Ama Jamal concept, which is before the beat, before the one, before the three. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four. Now, what does that mean? It just gives him a certain kind of groove because this is really a vamp. It's it's vamp type of of um, comping, which is not random. So a random comp would be something that would be say may on on the on the beat of up a four, and then again on the up of one, and then again on the up of three and then maybe on the upper four, and then again on the upper two, it would be random. It would be like one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, one, two, and three, four, one, two, and three. And there wouldn't be a pattern that is repetitious through the count of four. So that's the essential ingredient here of this particular groove, this Amajamala groove. And he has this on the up of four, so it's ahead of the beat. So that's the first category here is the head of the beat. One, two, three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, like that. So we'll show you that. Explaining a vamp, now vamp is a repeating musical figure. It could be rhythmic, it could be melodic, whatever. But usually it's rhythmic. And I talked about that in my video on Killer Joe. So here's what it sounds like playing a vamp on Killer Joe. So the definitive Amajamal groove is based on the ahead of the beat, in other words, ahead of one, or the end of four, anticipating the one. So it'd be one, two, three, four, and one, two, and 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 three, four, and one. Now that pattern of comping creates a groove. Why? Because it's a vamp. It's not random. One, two, three, four, one, two, um, two, um, two, um, two, um. So that's ahead of the beat. Now I'm going to show you the same concept but behind the beat on the end of one. Now you can get a similar groove playing a vamp on the end of one and the end of three. So like it'd be like one, one, two, three, four, one, and two, and three, and four, one, and two, and three, and four, one, and two, and three, and four, one, and two, and three. See it's a because it's a vamp, it has a groove to it. This is part two. Now I'm gonna talk about fourth voicings. Now, fourth voicings just mean that I'm going to play a root, a fourth, and a fourth above that. So there's a voicing. Now, for the first voicing, I'm going to go up here to there, up to the third. So I'm going to put the, it's a C major chord, so I'm going to put the third there, the sixth, and the ninth. So with the fourth voicing you have, this is a fourth, and this is a major fourth. Major fourth. That's the first voicing. Major fourth. Now you may say, well, that's a major fourth too. But no, now in this structure here on the C minor chord, this is C major six nine. Put the root in there, right? I put the root in there on the C. Now this becomes, if that's a C chord, becomes the fourth 
the sev flat seven and the minor third, you see? If I put the E flat chord in there, well now it becomes the uh, the nine, the five, and the root, you see? So it depends on what the root is. So I'm using a C row, th a root throughout this. So the first chord is a, a C six nines. That's a C minor seven sus, sus four. There's the sus four. Then I go down the scale. There's a D, a D six nine against the C bass, and there's a D flat six nine against a C bass. See, that's what it, what it really is. So, and then I go. Then I do spread voicings. going to talk about what I'm going to talk about is improvisation and creating lines that connect and I learned a lot about this from listening to Horace Silver or Bill Evans or any any of the great pianists that are geniuses that are able to create a fabulous sounding solo based on the fact that they're creating a conversation which has logic to it. In other words, one idea leads to the next. And so what I try to do is I try to do that. I try to emulate that idea of one phrase leading to the next in a, in, in a composition or a conversation in which you create ideas that one will lead to the next and create another idea. that so a lot of times I repeat an idea like you know just to emphasize it like and then something new and then something with that line. You can change the phrase so it isn't perfectly connected with the last one but it has a connection. This tune is easy to do because it has lines that uh, are connected like major here to minor then it has these chromatic lines so you can create a chromatic melody then this is more difficult but you have to get the idea so what I try to do is I try to create lines that connect and then lines that create a new idea. But get each one to connect to the previous one and then create a new idea that leads you into another, another dimension, you know, like... See, there's, a, there's a line that connects. Now I learned this by listening to Horace Silver. He always creates lines that are perfectly he's he's improvising like like a composer and also Bill Evans does that a lot. He he if you listen to his improvisations they sound like compositions. They you know like uh they may be something like this. So they'll create a line that connects and then something new. And the new thing will connect to the, the next thing. And it goes on and on. And it's a conversation. It, it sounds beautiful. It's, it's perfect because it, it makes a conversation. You, you're anticipating what will come next and that is rewarding. 
Signing off from the Jazz Ranch here in North Carolina. This is the Jazz Ranch South. It's almost sunset time. So glad you joined me. And until next time, I'll say in the words of my great friend, Hermie Dressel, God rest his merry soul, swing loose. And we'll see you next time around. Bye-bye. Oh, you're lucky we uh, showed up here just at the right time for sunset. And this is sunset at Sunset Beach, North Carolina. We love it here.